Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. I guess it's four o'clock. Good to see everyone. It's a great day in Liberty County. Yes, it is. Liberty County. Okay, we're all excited. We're all excited. We're all excited about a lot of things, but especially about the what's going to happen a little later. So appreciate everybody's uh, attention to that, and that's what makes us a great community. Mr. Brown has the meeting been properly advertised. Yes, sir, it has. I guess they're still doing it from the recordings. Um, I've asked uh, Mr. Joe Mosley if he lead us in an invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance. Please join him in that. Let's pray. Most kind and benevolent Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and all your blessings. Father God, we ask for uh, insight for this deliberative body as they discuss business relative to this community. We pray that you be with them and strengthen them. And Father God, we pray for this event that's going to occur to honor our native son. We pray that you'll bless it. This we thank you for in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Amen. Hello, sir. All right. Uh, Come on. Miss Leah, how much time do I have with you? How much time do you need, sir? Ten. In. All right, let's, let's do this real quick. I'm waiting on Commissioner Gill should be coming in the door. Uh, I'm trying to do all this one to synchronize some stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. If Kim, could you come with your finance report, please, ma'am? Today, actually, this was a short time for us to close and get this done, but um, at the end of March, we have actually achieved 94% of our budgeted revenues, looking really good. We have spent 75% of our budgeted expenditures <laughs> right on target. Um, at the end of month, uh, at the end of March, we have 7.7 months worth of undesignated, unreserved fund balance. In this time, one year ago, we were at 7.1, so we're a little ahead of, of where we were last year. We do have some departments that have either fully exhausted their budget or are running slightly ahead of schedule, and we're going to be putting together a, a comprehensive budget amendment that will help um, alleviate that situation, but I'll briefly go over some of those with you as We've noted in the past, elections has completely exhausted their budget um, due to all of the new regulations for the COVID um, rules during elections and even some unbudgeted elections and election audits that had to take place. Um, the tax commissioner's office running slightly over budget this month uh, due to some overtime and, and technical services and supplies. Uh, risk management. They're running ahead of schedule, and this will be on the budget amendment. We did make that lump sum payment to ACCG for the defined benefit plan to shore that up for that shortfall. It was about $1.3 million, so that was pretty significant, and that was not, uh, we did not have that amount budgeted. Um, your coastal Georgia uh, regional dues, those are paid all at once. Kind of skews that budget for the year, but there won't be anything else charged there. Uh, your circuit-wide public defender runs one month ahead of schedule until we get to the end of the year. Um, you've got three departments within the sheriff's office that are running ahead of schedule, significantly ahead of schedule, I would say, because of um, the increased number of employees that they've taken on, the overtime, and some of those uh, supplies uh, that they've purchased. And again, I will be coming before you with a comprehensive budget amendment that will help rectify that situation. Um, as, you, as I've mentioned before, we did not budget for the census coordinator, but we did extend that contract. That will also be in that amendment. And then um, the fire station loan, the, the loan proceeds that we had to transfer out for the fire station, that will also be on there. So uh, our other transfer sources and uses is running slightly ahead of schedule. Um, your solid waste operations has a modest uh, net income right now of about half a million dollars. We have not posted depreciation, so I do expect that to come down. We did implement the rate increases that you saw on that salary study. Those actually went into effect um, 
in, that goes into effect May 1st. We sent out those letters um, so that all the vendors and customers will know that there are new rates beginning May 1st. Um, your solid waste <coughs> operations, uh, just the disposal is running slightly ahead of schedule and that's because of the payments made to Broadhurst Environmental. Those those costs have increased slightly this year, but I, com I completely expect solid waste to operate in total within their budget. Uh, there are four departments in there, and there's only one of those four running slightly ahead of schedule. All of your special revenue funds, your 911, your victim witness, child support, recreation, record service center, all operating as scheduled. When we look at sales tax six, still running ahead, <laughs> looking really good when you look at cash flows again we came in about 58 almost $58,000 over what we had budgeted to receive in this month so to date collectively to date we're about 1.35 million dollars ahead of schedule mm -hmm. looking really good um, your t loss also looks good um, those amounts coming in collected to date a little over 4 million um, and that's only been one, two, three, four, five, six months. And that's all I have for your financial report, unless somebody has any questions for me. Help me think real quickly. Uh, when do we, when slash how do we recoup um, revenue from all the new house sales? Is that strictly through the digest when the, the mm -hmm. so, Houses that are being built. Well, let's just look at those built last year. So they'll hit the digest <coughs> this year. They can be picked up, I believe, at 60% or 65% of completion. Some of them may have been partially picked up last year, but then would fully come on this year. Mm -hmm. so you'll pick up those new housing uh, on the digest as a base value, but you also pick up any new housing sales, as you know, mm -hmm. in the intangible recording tax. Mm -hmm and some of those other things anytime those properties change. Okay. And that intangible recording tax, when we looked collectively at all revenues, that will be one of the revenues that we adjust upward because that's coming in over budget. So that's done very well. Very well, okay. Are you, Mr. Chairman, yes, go ahead. Mr. Brown, uh, do you know about when we're going to start on the convenience center improvements? Yes, ma'am. In fact, that's in my report, but uh, okay. Mr. Long and I met on the projects this week and he's got those in design, um, got them in, partial design for a layout so that we can bring y'all the gum branch site and the Isle of Wight site to look at so that you can approve how the layout is mm -hmm. and the location before we go to construction drawings. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kim. Yes, sir. Uh, we are making payments for the uh, coast of Georgia, correct? Yes. Where are we at? Where, where, what, just what percentage are we at with? Uh, so, so on the Head Start Center? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, so the Head Start Center, <laughs> we have already paid up to the $500,000 level. In fact, this past check we cut was a partial to get to that five hundred, dollars and so now 100% of the proceeds are going to start coming from Coastal Georgia. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, what I gave you. CIP plan and we wanted to go ahead and give this to you so you could get an initial look at uh, what you will see as an initial request for capital items in your upcoming budget. Um, just so that you know the things that are graded in that orange color are considered urgent, the yellow is considered necessary and the green is considered growth. Um, all of these areas are divvied out by items, vehicles, computers, building improvements, equipment, that sort of thing, and then by department so that you can see what departments have requested which items and whether they're urgent, necessary, or growth related. But this just gives you a snapshot of one year of that so that you can kind of be looking at that and getting ready for it. This will be part of your budget book when we Give those out next week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> next, next. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Still missing a few budgets. Um, I'll be sending out notices tomorrow for those departments who have not submitted those. Um, not many, but some. 
and Audrey and I will be putting together those budget books next week and hope to get those to you a week from tomorrow so that you can okay. have those and preview those before we come in for those budget hearings. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions for Ms. McLaughlin? No. I think we all have our own speed dial if we need her. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Kim. All right. Commissioner Gillard just sent me a text. Did you get it too, Mr. Simonton, that he's tied up at City Hall. He probably won't make the meeting. He's asked to be rescheduled to the first meeting um, next month. That's, that's, if I read his, he said, see you on, well, does he want you to go on? No, I, I think he probably wants you to go on. Okay, all right. Just says, I didn't know if you want to, I know you had to have a co-anchor or not, sir. Yeah. Come on, let's, 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 let's do Leah first, then we'll, let's do our proclamation first, and then we'll bring, um, I was just reading his text he sent me, he, that he wouldn't be able to. All right, um, listen, I, as I said earlier, it's a great day in Liberty County. Um, after we had a, a planning meeting, I got with Ms. Leah Poole over there. I said, Leah, we need to do something special for Davion. Let's, let's brainstorm. Threw around a few things and, nah, nah, nah. Then, then she pulled a rabbit, a true rabbit out of the hat, having her own personal artist. <laughs> you know, so she asked a young lady, Simone Nor Norworthy, who was a local artist, to do something for her. So I want us to go down by the uh, presentation here. And then, Mr. Brown, you got a copy of the resolution? Uh, I do. Okay. Then we're going to unveil it, and then we'll present this later this afternoon to Mr. Mitchell at the um, football field. All right. Yeah. Davion also played with Amateur Athletic Union, AAU, the South Georgia Kings, the Georgia Stars out of Atlanta, Georgia Circle, and also attended basketball camps all over the world due to his grandparents, Carl and Brenda Mitchell. And whereas Davion is a Texas four-star recruit, committed to play for Auburn, over offers from Cincinnati, Yukon, Florida, Georgia, and Clemson, among other colleges. And whereas, whereas Davion transferred to Baylor in his sophomore year to start playing point guard and was named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Big 12 Newcomer of the Year, third team all Big 12, first team all Big 12, won the Lefty Driscoll Award, the Naismith Assistant Player of the Year, and whereas Davion and Baylor Bears won the NCAA Championship on April 5th, 2021, Woo! defeating number one ranked undefeated Gonzaga by 86 to 70. Right. And now therefore be resolved that Liberty County Board of Commissioners declare Thursday, April 15th, 2021 to be Davion Mitchell Day. Thank you. 
really read my book for kind of you uh, <laughs> about him. She just said, she's good, he's a good kid, he doesn't give me any trouble. So that speaks a lot. Of she would tell me that all the time. So above his athletic ability, I'm glad he had his character. And most of all, I'm glad he's from Liberty County, Georgia. Yeah. That makes us what? Liberty yeah. County proud. She's teaching right now. Listen, when we came in, you can't sign the front, you sign the back. It's an original piece of art, so we want to keep it original. Okay. We're going to sign that right now, please, so we can get that out of here. Can I just turn around again? Yeah. That, I don't want to scratch it. Certificate of Authenticity. It's a one of a kind. He belongs to us. Every time he would say, I am still George, I would get so proud. <laughs> Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Awesome job. All right, Mr. Trent. Mary and Tavin has a perk. Meeting yeah. there. <laughs> Every meeting. <laughs> 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 mm. Man, it was been the mayor. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try to go uh, quickly as I can through this. Uh, Beck Street and Olive Street improvements. Uh, just some, fixing some uh, bad looking asphalt over there for uh, Commissioner Gillard. Uh, we're ready to go through those. We're ready to go to bid with those as soon as uh, Gary wants to. Let the commissioners know to go to bid on that. We'll put that out and get that done. Um, Georgia Department of Trace, Transportation Centerline Mileage. This is a centerline mileage that we report to DOT for our Elmig money. Um, it stayed the same this year, so we were able to get all that report and get that done. Uh, been working on the Mill Park Fire Station some. Um, 
I know you talked to uh, Rusty McCall last meeting, and we're kind of working with him on getting that rolling. Um, the Yeoman's Road, um, some of the pipes going in, but most of the pipe is there on the ground. I think they took delivery on some of the other drainage structures today. Uh, so you'll probably see more work full force Monday. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of spotty, but it's right. you should see them more full force Monday because mm -hmm. all the materials are starting to get here. Mount Olive at Church Road, uh, that intersection right there, um, concrete's not poured yet, so we're kind of waiting on that concrete to get poured, then they can do the next little bit. Um, because after they pour it out, then they can do the striping, and then that job will be mostly finished. Uh, Pioneer Road, uh, looks like they got the edge line on it, so for all practical purposes, that uh, project is finished. Um, Recreation Department, ADA Accessibility. Uh, we had the uh, uh, pre-proposal meeting today uh, at 2 o'clock. Uh, had two contractors that um, were in attendance. Both are excellent contractors for this type of work and have done sidewalk work for Liberty County in the past. Um, so we hope to get some good bids on that. Uh, Melvin Lane, um, I had brought uh, Commissioner Giller some pictures of some driveways that uh, got fixed out there uh, that were steeper than uh, what the residents wanted. We have not heard any response back from residents whether they were uh, okay with it or not, but um, I'm assuming right now no news is good news. <laughs> Uh, working with the Public Works um, improvements on their site, got the survey work done. Uh, Mr. Brown and I are going to look at uh, what we need to do as far as uh, cutting off a piece of property to do what we need to do on that uh, project here probably next week sometime. Um, in the Isle of Wight uh, Solid Waste Convenience Center, we got some drawings going on. We're working with that with Joey. Make sure that uh, we get everything like we want it and uh, kind of bring it to you guys and let y'all look at it and uh, give us your opinions on what we're doing too. Other than that, I tried to be quick. You were? Not, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. I thought it was going to be a record. <laughs> what about, uh, I know you was off for a while, but what about Bill Carter Road? Bill Carter Road? Yeah. Yes, sir. I have an estimate, um, and I, need, I will send it to you. I sent it to Mr. Brown already last week. No, this week. This week, I think. Yeah, this week. Yeah. And I, we will forward it to you. Okay. What uh, I have on the Bill Carter Road right now, the estimate is for full depth reclamation, kind of cleaning the whole road and, and fixing the whole road. Um, it's a pretty high estimate. Take a lot of your money. Uh, we may want to, uh, Mr. Brown and I were talking about it just a few minutes ago, we may want to take a step back and look at just maybe patching and doing a little bit of overlaying and, and not doing quite as much work on the roadway. Uh, it is a busy road, um, but we'll get with you and look at it and see how much money we want to try to uh, put toward working on this road. All right. Yeah, totally up yeah. to you, Commissioner Leader. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention <clears throat> with two and Mr. Brown and Chairman Lovett, to make sure I'm on the right track. If someone's supposed to be doing a drawing for the redesign on Arlen's Highway down there, the redesign on the whole highway? No, from the existing <laughs> road coming out now going around that curb that I'm, I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to let it go. Uh, going around that curb. Who's supposed to be doing that? Anybody? The only thing that's it's already there, uh, Mr. Stevens, is what we tried to send electronically. We've got the hard copies on, which is what uh, Thomas and Hutton submitted as part of that project. And it pretty much takes in from that first road, which is where the taper starts for the turn in and goes beyond the site. So it's already done. What, I can, there, what I'll do is I'll, I'll print eight or ten copies of it and bring it over here for you and put it in the box. So make sure I'm clear. And so nothing is going to be done to the main road section that's there now. Yeah, no, it, it will. It will. You'll have turn it. You'll have turn lanes, left turn lanes. Yes. And XL and D-cell on both of those. Uh, mm -hmm. That's right. And that's so you'll have a straight fun. three lane. Who's who's going to fund that project? LCDA. LCDA. Okay. All right. I like to see the drawings. Yes, sir. I, I'll, I will print that out, uh, and I'll have that over here in the morning. Okay. All right. That's my problem. Okay. <laughs> we'll print some big ones so you can read it. Good, because my glasses small to hand it out. It gets kind of illegible. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Oh, still quick. Still quick. All right. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Trent. You better go ahead. Glad you're doing well, sir. You better go ahead. <laughs> you're doing well. Sir. All right, Wellborn Street, sir. Oh, he's dropping his phone, his mask, and everything else. <laughs> Good afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. So um, we're going to bring you up to date on where we are on the Welburn Street project. Do, do I, can I change with this? Please? <clears throat> so just, just to bring everybody uh, back up to speed again, the Welburn Street project, basically, this is Welburn Street right here. This isn't showing up as well. This is Welburn Street here. This is Ashmore Street right here, Main Streets at this point. So this project basically uh, filled in the ditch and put a double line of 48 inch pipe here. And then it created a little bit of a plunge pool here so that it could slow the water back down before it gets down to Main Street and cause some problems down there. So uh, can I make this a full screen? Is there any way to do that or is this it? That's it, okay. All right. So. This is the first shot before we started. This is standing Welburn Street looking down um, uh, toward Main Street. And, and you can see the size, well, if the picture were clear, you could see the size of the ditch. Basically, it's about three or four foot side. Its top goes down to nothing. And when it rains, uh, it pretty much just floods this entire area and then erodes the sides of the bank and everything. So that's, that's why I'm basically uh, Commissioner Gilliard was trying to get something going here to fill that in. So we bid the project November 24th, 2020. Uh, you guys awarded it to Palm Coast Utilities on December 17th for $221,367. And construction bid, um, uh, construction started on March 1st, 2021. Um, so first thing we did is in Palm Coast, they, they set the, um, uh, the head wall this is uh, two, two 48 inch pipes coming out. Uh, they sent the shop drawing to us and told us that was 31,000 pounds mm. of concrete right there. So we got the crane on site, it showed up on site at 42,000 pounds. Mm. So it's a huge, well you can see the guy standing in a huge structure. Uh, this is it installed, you can see they're not through with everything, still got the silk fence around and the riprap. So they're still working on that part of it. So we set the head wall and, uh, and it started, actually, let me go to this. These kind of got in the wrong order. So we started at Headwall, laid the pipes up to this point, and then right over here was a telephone conduit, mm -hmm. concrete telephone conduit that was not located during design locates or the construction <laughs> locates. We happened to find it as they were digging up through there, and there was a bunch of trash and everything in there. So he was taking big chunks of curb and everything out, and he grabbed that one, and it didn't come too well. <laughs> uh, we did uh, manage to expose it, and it was uh, basically a concrete conduit underneath here. And this actually starts at the <clears throat> what used to be the Coastal Utilities main office on Ryan Avenue. Comes up under or near the drugstore, across the street, back up through the woods, and then comes up to here. So just in time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll never run over here again. <laughs> <laughs> so we found the conduit. Somebody give him some water. <laughs> and, and, and Sean called me, and, and, and so we uh, went out and, and uh, checked elevations, and, and it was going to be about two foot up into the pipe. So what we decided to do was build a, a, a box on the end of those pipes that were already there and then bring this and drop the new pipes into them so that it just falls down. We get over the top of the conduit in there. So you can see kind of right here that the blue is the telephone conduit. It's gonna be about two foot up into the pipe. We had this head wall and this pipe already there, built the uh, diversion box in the red there, just raised this pipe up a little bit so that it came right up. So this is, if you're standing in Welburn Street, and if you remember that first picture, it was like the little bitty ditch. Uh, this, this is what's there now. It's all graded out, it's got inlets. This is what's left of the sidewalk. The rest of the sidewalk will be placed back in there so that the trail will, will be reconstructed. 
and then the, uh, the, the shrubbery and the plants and everything that we're in there and the lighting will be back installed. We figure this is going to be complete in about another week or two. I'm meeting with Sean um, next Tuesday, Wednesday to, uh, to go through the alignment of the sidewalk and how we're going to put all that back in so that he can kind of finish that up. Plunge pool is still under construction. He's hauling riprap in there to get that in place uh, through that. So any questions so far? Okay, so the additional box, interference box, uh, proposal was $11,000. We basically went back, and because we were putting that box in there, we were able to eliminate some of the other uh, boxes that were in there and the things. So we're actually saving, uh, or the below the uh, original award will be about seven to $8,000 below. So we'll be in about three to $4,000 change order on the project to, 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 be done, to get it done. Now, now, Wellborn is in front of a west, west side of the church? Yeah, right, okay. right, up, right below, closer to between the church and um, General Scriven. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Any questions from anybody? No. Mm -mm. That's my presentation. All right. That was pretty quick, too. That was, was pretty quick. Get you guys. Hey, well, I think oh, Paul, I'm, I'm, yes, sir. I'm glad I saw it uh, across the street. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. but, uh, and I guess, Mr. Chairman, the only question I had, um, do, do I get credit for a whole meeting for coming in on? Yes, you do. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're present. I, I thought we only reserved that for Justin. Right. <laughs> really? Thank you all. all right, sir. Well, one quick question. When when it ties into that drainage there, coming to Main Street, and from Main Street goes where? It goes through? Eventually to Bryant, Bryant Commons. Commons? Over that yeah, way. It, it eventually gets to okay. Bryant Commons. Basically, okay. it goes to Main Street, goes under, and it goes pretty much right between the Claude Ryden's building and the old ice, well, where the old ice plant was yeah. right down through there. Yeah. And then it goes under the Ford dealership to the other side of 84, okay. and then down to Bryant Commons. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, the the one um, on the Commerce uh, by the fire station, uh, which is by the Ford dealership, that was a uh, open ditch. Uh, what five, six years ago, maybe longer? Actually, 2010. Is 20, when that job oh, was I thought you said 20 years ago. Yeah, 20, yeah 2010. Yeah, about yeah. about 11 years. Yeah, so that's when they mm -hmm. filled that ditch in. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I will tell you this too. You know, if if you drive across Main Street right now, that there's. We, we have patched that mm -hmm. pipe in there a couple of times, yeah, yeah. And, and it's starting to sink a little bit again. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to have to do that because uh, we're working on design of the, of the TAP, the City of Hinesville TAP project. is going to extend the streetscape mm -hmm. from Main, from downtown all the way over to 84 and into Bryant Commons. Mm -hmm. As part of that project, we'll be replacing that pipe there, too. That. Okay. Gotcha. Trying to follow the water drill. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thanks, <coughs> I'll go ahead and launch in here and be, be real quick. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of things to bring you up to speed on. Um, on the capital projects, and I'll, I'll come back and show you a picture of that. We had a construction progress meeting today. Head Start Center, they've actually poured two of the five slab sections out there. It's coming along real good. They'll start, if they can get door frames in this week, uh, they'll start standing up actually concrete walls wow. in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that project's going real, and again, you'll see it in just a second. Right now, as you're aware, we're in design phases on the Miller Park Fire Station, uh, the Miller Park Recreation Park, Gill Park Phase 2, and the Convenience Center improvements that we talked about. Another thing I want to mention real quickly is you're aware that in a T-Splash, there's a 30% mandatory project list that the entities adopted. Uh, I've made you a copy of that uh, at, your, at your seat there couple of things to point out that are moving on that, and it's really because some other projects are moving that these need to be tied into. Um, one of these uh, is the intersection improvements at Veterans and South Main. Those are intersection improvements not only at that location, but then extends all the way down uh, South Main. That's a city-sponsored project, uh, but that is almost completely finished in design and ready to go to, ready to go out to bid or <coughs> the first phase of that early summer, yeah. <clears throat> early summer. Okay. it'll be done in three phases so this money that's allocated for that project in a t-splash will be partnered up with money that the city already has uh, for that project can it's we get a look at that that design please sir yes sir yeah okay. I'll, I'll be glad you know we like like joy 
Okay. Okay. Whatever. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. And that's supposed to go how far down South Casey Drive? Well, ultimately, all three phases go yeah. to Casey. Yeah. First, what we're doing right now, first phase will be Second Street to um, Veterans Parkway and then Veterans Parkway to Ralph Gordon. Okay. And, and then Ralph Gordon to Casey. Yeah, and then okay. Ralph Gordon to Casey. Okay. Will be the third phase. Third phase. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of traffic right there. <laughs> yes. Oh. And a yeah, whole lot of accidents. And, and I, I think, you know, just to not to try to get into a great bit of detail, but basically what, what happens is at Veterans Parkway, the, the straight through traffic can't go, I mean, the right turn can't go because the straight through is backed up and the left turns can't get into the left turn because mm -hmm. the straight through is backed mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. All we're trying to do is widen things out and give people a little more access to it. And then try to take it back down and get it through uh, the intersection. Okay. <clears throat> the other project uh, off of this list that's moving in coordination with another one, you're where I'm, Mr. Chairman, it are the, uh, is the safety improvement project uh, at McLarry's Curve down at Flemington. Mm -hmm. uh, that's already been let and is due to be awarded any time uh, to the contractor there. So the sidewalks that are supposed to tie into that and run all the way to uh, Liberty County High are, are now being designed as part of that so those two can tie together. So uh, that's good news on both that's of those. That's good ones. news. So again, with your 30% list, what we'll try to do uh, as a working group out of the Metropolitan uh, Technical Planning Committee of Metropolitan Planning, then what we'll try to do is partner up with these other GDOT projects that are along those routes, along with any others, to, to get those moving as we see that. So we'll, we'll keep, I want to keep you posted on, on where the transportation is. It's good to see the penny starting to go to work. <clears throat> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, this is a picture of that Head Start building. Mm -hmm. uh, that's down there now. Um, very large, large building. You can you can see the pads poured out and what they've what they've got left to do. So again, as long as they can get the uh, door frames and stuff, they'll start with actually blocking up one of those sections right. in the next two weeks, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's it's really on on track. Just another another view of that from out on the 17 side. Uh, the others that were in pre-design, I did. Uh, Trent didn't bring this up. He's actually working a little bit on this project, or will be. Uh, I met with the operational folks at EMS uh, this past week to talk about space needs for the EMS station in Midway. Uh, Development Authority has, has said, yes, that'll be fine. They actually sent some CAD drawings over that Thomas and Hutton had done for that park. So we've got a location for it already planned out. Uh, so I plan to mark up some stuff. I've already done that to send tomorrow to the architect so he can go ahead and do a preliminary design that we can show you on that building. Uh, for the plan. Trent will be handling the, uh, the site work and coordinating with that. Public Works Operations, uh, they've completed the field work on the survey involving the extra property uh, that we propose to get as part of that. So I look forward to getting those drawings from Trent and then we can get those to Rusty McCall <coughs> and go ahead and do the same thing we're doing on EMS with that. And that's to do a placement of that building on that location. Uh, we walked the Liberty Gym this morning. Uh, there's some challenges there. Um, you know, before the roof got patched, there was some more damage that got done to the floor. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Buckley and those and the team walked through there this morning with myself and Jimmy, and uh, we they took some other pictures. So basically, what they're going to come back and do is, is recommend a scope of work uh, that they'll present to Jimmy from an operational standpoint, then we'll present to you guys in the Recreation Board as far as what to do. I, it, suffice it to say the floor's got to come up. Uh, you'll probably mm -hmm. go back with, uh, with a multi-purpose type floor, similar to what's in the Riceboro Center, that lends itself then to more use for the stage area and stuff for events if you wanted to. Uh, but we'll come back with you, to you with a complete detail on that. Be pretty interesting. There's a lot of things to work around there. Joe, the, the floor at the Schumann Center, what, I mean, if the one at Riceboro, I've been down there, that's multi-purpose. What's, what's the uh, material of the one at the Schumann Center? That's it's wood. That's wood, it's at, wood at the Schumann Center? It is. The entire? Yes, sir, it's wood. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it is. Every now and uh, they just did a resurface on yeah. it. I uh, believe it was last year. Uh, we, it was because when we did the air conditioning work in there, we had to be sure and and uh, make make sure those guys didn't didn't disturb being the new flooring. Has it always been wood? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
It was a wood. I guess it, 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 yeah, interesting thing here, uh, get into a bunch of detail with it and show you some pictures later. It's pretty interesting. When, when we took up some of that floor this morning, it's the original layer underneath was supported by um, steel embedded uh, spikes, if you will, mm -hmm. in the concrete right. that created the vapor barrier between the floor. And there's really no way to take those out of that concrete and trying to cut them down or cut them off would, would cost so much. So you're going to end up coming back over with a foam, some kind of foam overlay with a, with a floor on top. It'll be great. Again, you won't have to cover it for events. Um, it, it'll be much more maintenance friendly and hold up very well. So uh, we'll come back with a complete scope of work. He's, he's just starting to work on that. But I, I guess one other question on that floor. Now, the, the multi-purpose, what is, I mean, do you get a true bounce of the ball like you're doing? You're going to get a very, very similar bounce to the wood, but it is not going to be like the wood. Okay. It'll be, but, the, you know, the, it is like the one in the Rice Burr Center. Mm -hmm. okay. But he's going to explore all options. Okay. Now, all of our elementary school have those, too. Y yes, we're actually the one at Riceboro. The one in elementary school is more of a rubberized surface. Yes. Uh, the one at Riceboro Center is, uh, is, is, are, are laid in tiles right. uh, that are more conducive to a true balance oh, okay. on a basketball. But, Joey, let me say this the, the one at the Riceboro Center right now, I don't know how many years has it been since that place was. Probably not a good judge either of time. I was thinking it was a few years ago that no, it's, been, it's been more than a few years. The Re reason why I'm saying that because it's, it's coming up. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is coming. It's, it's, it's peeling up. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I know why um, the the Schumann Center. The last time I was in there, it was cloth because they had the blue had cover. Cover on it. That's, that's what. Mm -hmm. it was. It covered. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll come back with complete scope of work okay. for you. Let David detail it out uh, before we start to try to redesign something. Obviously, Jimmy will be involved in the rec board and the operational side of that yeah. uh, on what events and stuff. Joe, let, let's let it be our goal, though, to retain as much of that nostalgic experience as we can for that gymnasium. Uh, uh, certainly. It's, yeah. you know, there's, there are some challenges in what's needed in the space with the restrooms and compliance mm. and a lot of that if we're trying to keep the stage with to. Some dressing areas and you know, there are some challenges, but absolutely that's the goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and when we, you know, I think I think it'd be disappointing if we didn't after mm -hmm. what, what y'all were able to do on yeah. the other piece. Yeah. Uh, we did hold a meeting uh, this past week with, with the task force from the health department related to the health department building. Uh, this gets us in shape basically to start with RFP for architectural services so that they can do these same things we've been talking about on the others, step in and do a space analysis, see what's needed, and then Look, <clears throat> look, look to start design on that building. The health department, as y'all are aware, uh, has been saving money for that project that gets us going on this. So they've got enough that we could, in fact, probably get to construction drawings if we wanted to. Two reasons, obviously, we want to speed that up is that the next splash round is right around the corner. So we want to be prepared to be able to show the public something on what's proposed to be built. Or if money, some of this Rescue America money, American Rescue Plan money, excuse me, um, can be used for health care facilities. I've already talked to our gentleman that works currently out of the Atlanta area about trying to get in line for some of that money that would come to the state for health care facilities if that would qualify. Mm -hmm. I really want to have a space plan and some kind of hopefully definitive value to be able to share with him and those folks in Atlanta for some state funding, hopefully. Sounds good. Be able to do that. Sounds good. Uh, we did open uh, bids this past week on on the T hangers at the airport. We had to abandon that first bid uh, because the contracts couldn't get executed from the state side. Uh, so quickly bundled it back up, went back out. Uh, we had two bidders yesterday on that project, so we're working the specifics of those. Those will actually get scored in the morning, and then uh, we'll be back for presentation before the three bodies, like we did last time, uh, to talk about construction also shaping up what the state participation would be in that project so we know what our net cost is in the end. Uh, again, the other thing I put at your desk, and we actually uh, it popped up about probably 10 o'clock this morning, that National Association of Counties was doing an update on several things, and one would be the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, um, formerly known under the, under the first one as CARES Act. This is different. So what I did was make you a printout of everything off of that NACO site. You, you can see in general what it's proposed to be used for. I think the disappointing news for us today is we still have no news from Treasury on the specifics. Mm -hmm. uh, they are um, weighing all the questions, though, that NACO is sending them. 
and they have appointed a special task force office to work with cities, counties, and tribal organizations in the administration, which is great for us administratively. So uh, we still wait on that guidance, but this is just a little handout. This is as much detail as basically we have at this time on it. I did want you to know everything we Joey, know. Joey, uh, in my haste, I may not, excuse me, I may not be seeing it, uh, but I know Chatham County is uh, announcing what their um, allotment will be. Yeah, yes, sir. So, so, so in the yet confirmed, well, there's two things there. Um, entitlement communities, and I'm not sure whether City of Savannah uh, is an, I'm sure City of Savannah is an entitlement community with mm -hmm. density in the, in, the, in the blocks or census mm -hmm. there. Um, they have an estimate of what their amount may be. Mm -hmm. That has not been confirmed by Treasury to anybody. So that's the other thing that we've asked them to confirm. So there is an estimate out there. Our estimate uh, was somewhere in a total of 11 million bucks, okay. uh, 11 million dollars that might come. Mm -hmm. But again, that's the other confirmation we're waiting on is, is, that, is that number. Okay. Um, entitlement communities are being funded, as you'll see on this chart, out of a separate pot of money that's going straight to them. Uh, and in some cases, it's less than what, what counties are getting based on population basis. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Okay. Joe, I, have, I have a question. Now, could you go back to that, um, that list of projects? Okay, now, all of those projects uh, from EMS Station to the Health Department, are all of those uh, already funded through our EMS Station is one you all authorized to go in and get design on because the immediate need to move out of that non-code compliance station okay. down there and get that building moved for your road department project. So there are not, to answer your question, okay. sorry to be so long, yeah, it well, is okay. not a funded project at this point. Okay, and, and I guess the other question, and, and, I, you know, and I appreciate this handout, I'll, I'll look at this and because uh, I had sent you a, a, a text or an email because I couldn't make the last one. But, um, and w without any more um, information that, than, than you were privy to today, we, we um, I, I've heard, you, you know, that X amount of trillion uh, for infrastructure or what have you. And um, when infrastructure, um, w that's roads, bridges, well, so it, the, and I wish, you know, we don't have any, any bridges here. Yeah, so there, there's a couple of things happening, this shaking, this been on the news, and obviously this has kind of died down out of the news a little bit. What you may be hearing more about is the Infrastructure Act mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the Does president's design? proposing to the okay. Congress. Okay. Uh, that is, from what Those I understand, and roadways, separate, separate highways, from this. separate than this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be separate. The only infrastructure right now that I think is pretty doggone clear in here and that we just got to get the guidance on on uh, how that would be administered and what the requirements would be is water and sewer. And you'll okay. see that in there. But uh, infrastructure, you know, being a, a broad topic, it wouldn't include um, buildings, w or would it? In, all, all we know that we can go on right now from what NACO is saying and ACCG is in the first CARES Act money, which is different, <clears throat> infrastructure was frowned upon. And so that's the reason we've asked those questions. Can we do other infrastructure in here if we can tie it to COVID? I've got to, you know, how broad can you let me be? I've got to space out my EMS units more whatever for the sleeping quarters, blah, blah, blah. Can I use it for an EMS station? Right. Can I use it for an emergency purpose building? Mm -hmm. uh, can I use it for a health department? Because I'm gonna be administering more COVID shots and I need to be prepared and the ones inadequate. We don't have those answers. Okay. But honestly, we don't. Uh, to answer your other question, that public works is funded through Splash. Mm -hmm. Liberty Gym, mm -hmm. as you know, it's got right. some holding money in Splash mm -hmm. and the health department's what Next we're talking about trying to, to, you know, to find some funds for. And then, and and, um, and there's a total another big trillion thing <laughs> could be if Congress passes it. So, if so they he, do. he's he's released his Infrastructure Act. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that he's given it another name, but it's the Infrastructure Act that he's proposed in the trillions of dollars, and uh, he has speculated on what that money might be used for. But it's got to go through the congressional. But, but if that passes, then we just need to make sure that Commissioner Jones and Commissioner Frazier who work at the paper mill just keep producing paper. That's so it. That, <laughs> so that we That's we it. can- uh, They put a roll yeah. of green paper on trillions, it. Trillions, 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 yeah. yeah. It'd be green paper, it'd be great. The uh, only last thing to, uh, to tell you there is, um, I know we had some question about the summer youth. We've talked about that. I may actually defer to Mr. Mosley just a little bit on that because uh, he and I had a conversation about trying to ramp that up. I know the city's going to do theirs, so you want to take a second and tell them where you are. Uh, we're, uh, 
asked, talked to city manager uh, Kenny Howard about it. He said that the uh, county was, I mean, the city was going to proceed forward with theirs. I actually had a conversation with uh, gentleman yesterday. Larry Murray. Um, Larry. Connection. Is it David or John? Oh, uh, uh, David Floyd. Okay, David Floyd. Uh, David said that he's available to, if we wanted to move forward with it, that uh, it right now be a matter of securing the sites and moving forward on the project. So he's kind of waiting for us to say go. Do a coastal work source. Well, now let me, let's back up just a second because I think I might have confused him. So I was really talking about the summer work program for summer youth. David was with the summer food. Food, food yes. Yeah, right. David was right. summer food. Okay. You, you want to touch on, on youth and then I'll touch on the food. Um, they are, uh, the youth have inquired and they're, they're ready to go. It would be a matter if we want to expand the program and invite more youth to participate advertise and, to, and try to encourage those youth to come. Scaring spots uh, with department heads who would like to uh, engage the youth. So those are some things that we need to take care of. And uh, we've reached out, he's reached out to the new daddy. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Murray, Larry <laughs> Murray's a new father, to, like uh, some mm -hmm. others in the room, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, has indicated they may want to take on that youth. Um, I saw a picture of Mr. Murray yeah. asleep, in fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. He gets mm -hmm. asleep. Uh, last night, but so, so I think that's good news, and we will try to plow ahead with that. Okay. As far as the summer food goes, that's a whole different issue uh, because um, because of the COVID, because of the delivery, and because of the lack of someone to really furnish it at this point. Um, Coastal Georgia last year, nobody bid on it. We had to go out and get Coastal Georgia. They kind of begrudgingly, in a good way, agreed to try to do it. Um, I, I just don't I don't really see. We're really we're really too late now. In the April May time frame, those work stop those workshops for those federal funds actually started this month. You had to get somebody certified, so probably because of COVID and non-provider. I'd really like before next year, if some of the COVID stuff uh, dies down, to really reach back out to the Board of Education, who has the lunch rooms there, uh, ready to prepare. Um, but uh, right now, it looks pretty difficult for us to be able to do anything on summer food. Wasn't there another agency providing that? No, that was the only one in coastal Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Coastal I, th I thought we, not competition, we had someone else that, that was eight. doing. It was at, out of Savannah? They didn't no. Do second Harvest. They didn't do second Harvest. Second some, Harvest. Second somebody. Harvest came second in harvest. and did some sites. Yeah. Yeah. The normal provision of sites. Yeah. Um, but my, I guess my question is, will, will they do the same this year? Well, they had gotten some COVID relief funds. Mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So, I'm, but I can I can reach out and check. Yeah. I, I would like to know that somebody's. Yes, yeah, sir. I'll be I'll be glad to reach out yeah. and check. Yeah. Okay. Second harvest. That's what it was. I know somebody else was doing the same thing. Uh, uh, let me follow up on Commissioner Gillick real quickly. <clears throat> With the new, well, what? <laughs> not sure which part of money that may come our way, but. Even if it's the infrastructure plan that the president proposes, or, or even this enjoy, if we get those funds, that will help us then with the projects that we have, because we could we have more dollars then to do more infrastructure improvement with you, 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 potentially. You do, what you do and, and and here here's a little bit of a caveat that could slow things down, or, or definitely will make it more expensive on a project for you. Is those federal funds you're going to have to follow federal guidelines on them. <clears throat> so you're going to have Davis-Bacon Act that comes in, um, and generally that's a 20% increase in the project on average. So it depends. I would mm. tell you personally that um, the, if you look to fund a project using those federal funds, it needs to be a large project mm. so, that, so that you offset that increased cost <laughs> and spread it mm -hmm. because the increased requirements are going to be there too. What and, and, and the only thing we don't know about that some others had in them on the federal side were, were Buy America provisions. Mm -hmm. And when you do that then, also those costs go up because you limit you limit the materials and where they come from and some of those type things. Mm -hmm. What project do we have that's roughly, uh, I remember the last one was the water project, which in the, that project was what I call it shovel ready. Mm -hmm. When that money came through so it was able to jump right on it. Do we have any projects that's close to 50% ready if we get some funding? You do. I, in fact, one of the things I'd think about as we get the clarification from Treasury on your water and sewer is uh, we have the uh, we have most of the construction stuff ready on that water sewer extension, the last phase that y'all are going to do down Lewis Frazier to get close to uh, Riceboro's system. I, my suggestion would be if that works out, they release the funds, we go ahead and get that on the street. And instead of trying to apply for a block grant for that, 
uh, go ahead and fund it through that. Maybe look for a block grant to put towards your health department mm -hmm. uh, in, in that sense, because um, it'd be difficult to have two at the same time. But then that would also free up your splash six money that you've been holding for that project, mm -hmm. and you could reallocate that to another source as a board. Yeah, like something for the kids. Recreation, anything, we you see want to, anything that was on the ballot that, that was approved in Splash 6, then you could take, I think it's roughly $80,000 out there, maybe 70, but you could take that money and shift it over to another approved project. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown, I, Mr. Chairman, I was going to ask, um, Mr. Mosley, is, is the youth, like, are they going to start meeting, like, here, or are they going to still do Zoom? Or have y'all discussed that? Or No, ma'am, we hadn't really had no uh, serious discussion about it. We were still trying to stay within COVID-19 protocols, but if things lighten up, then mm -hmm. we could bring them back. Have some here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then the youth program, we're looking at getting them um, in to start the interview process, kind of like where Mr. Sprinkle had left off or whatever. Is that what we're looking at, getting them back in and getting them employed for the summer? Because they'll be out of school soon. Mm -hmm. We need so yes ma'am we can do that okay all right thank you mm -hmm. other couple of quick things for you these are kind of last minute notes i got a memo from from jimmy martin we he and i actually talked about it last week they've had some issues with atvs uh in recreation parks uh tearing up the grounds in there um, some of the outlying parks and i think also uh down here at james brown so the rec board is recommending that the board of commissioners ask the county attorney to look at an ordinance that prohibits atvs and similar vehicles in those parks which i think is reasonable um, they're, they're not built to sustain that. Mm -mm. So um, mm -mm. If, it's, if, it's, if it's okay with y'all, I'll go ahead and get with Mr. Davis and have him start trying to draft a simple ordinance. Yes, sir. That. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, a drop-in celebration for Ms. Yvonne Jones at the Road Department. Yeah. Uh, That's going to happen uh, April 21st, yeah. which is next week from 2 to 4. Uh, she's retiring, and uh, it would be great if y'all could, could drop by and see her. Uh, also, please remember, I think it's the... Um, last week of this month, we have our first budget presentation, maybe the 27th, somewhere along there. And then you have your second round on the day of your uh, first of May meeting, which is the fourth. Do you have so. a time on the 27th? No, I, I didn't need to do that Bring your lunch that the day. D, the D <laughs> person, they have a temporary person in there. They haven't asked for any difference, so they won't present. So there are certain, I just need to make sure that we agree on a list of presenters mm -hmm. and then a, a beginning time and an ending time. And I've gotten several responses from some of the elected officials on the specific day that may conflict. So I know who has to be scheduled on the 27th versus the 4th. I just got to nail down the top. A couple of notes here. Uh, just remember, Mr. Clark will come before you, uh, like Ms. McLaughlin said, we had a, a Zoom with him late this afternoon. That budget for the public defender, you really need to go ahead and act on during the month of May. Uh, he has to have that yeah, contract back to the state by the first part of June. Yeah. That's, that's a regular occurrence. Uh, the other thing I'd ask is what their pleasure is on starting time. So, mm, I have something that's pending, I'll let you know. Mine will be afternoon, but we, we don't have a meeting on that day. Not we haven't changed our times or dates. Okay. Not, not, not yet. Okay. I was just, <laughs> I have a five o'clock on here for something. Two years from now. That'll work. Uh, and so we, let us look at the numbers that are involved yeah, because if we're just wanting to work a half day, then right. we might be able to do that on one of the days. Afternoon's fine with me, but whatever. We, we'll drop in the calendar. Well, sorry. No, it's, it's my schedule too. Yeah, okay, so I want to delete this. Miss mm -hmm. Chair, uh, yeah. about our meeting schedule, uh, when are we going to decide on that? Or has it been decided? It, it hadn't been decided. Um, one commissioner said it doesn't matter to them. They, they're flexible. So that's, yes. <laughs> that's right. Uh, really hadn't heard 
much from the, uh, the other commission, nor have we gone out and said, you know, what's your, what's your pleasure? We just have discussed it kind of informally. Um, when, when I looked at it, um, I, I like the idea of, you know, Tuesday, Tuesday rather than Tuesday, Thursday. You know, so the first Tuesday and third Tuesday. And I chose 6 o'clock because <clears throat> when I'm thinking about traffic, people trying to get here when we go back to our regular sessions, it will allow the general public time to get to, you know, those who are coming. I, I know everybody's not coming, but I'm, to, to make it here and make it here on time. Chair, sure, I like that idea. You like that idea? Mm -hmm. uh, so first and second, I mean, first and third Tuesdays at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, I like that. So, it matters to me. If you're going to make it, you're going to make it. Absolutely. Yep. Those who ain't coming, ain't coming. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, unless we have another basketball champion, then. Yeah, we're just, we're yeah. just moving. Yeah. Just moving. Let's put an agenda for the, for the first Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Speaking of basketball champion, I, I, I hate to leave early, but I got to go get my grandkids to the parade. Yes, sir. And then also, Mr. Chair, just one. Does, does it need to be, excuse me, sir? Does it need to be in a, an item that we vote on? Or just can't no, we? I would. I would okay. vote on All right. First Tuesday. It's going to be on the agenda next, yes, sir. next meet. Okay. Yes, sir. First and third Tuesday, 6 o'clock. And the, the proposals will be there? I mean, what, whatever you just said, that's it, Tuesday? That's, that's the first what we're third, proposing. First and third Tuesday, Tuesday at 6. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I got one other thing. Mr. Brown, put it on your calendar. Somehow or another, we need to take Liberty County, we need to take a look at the blight areas in this county because it's getting worse. Absolutely. <laughs> Infrastructure with the trillions. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> You're right, sir. We just talked about that. If they let us spin it, we could build houses or repair houses. Then the third Tuesday as well. That's when they're meeting. Huh? Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, Dad had to run over here. Uh, uh, what? Oh, they meet that evening too, don't they? They meet in the evening. They meet at four. Yeah, but they meet in the four, evenings. Four o'clock. Four. 4.30. 4.30. So that would throw something, if somebody it might throw to Jeff. something here, yeah. that's going to well, throw them off until they, the next month. They don't bring stuff from their meetings either. They bring it, when they have a meeting, they bring it first meeting. The next. They never come to the next. Okay. Yeah, so there's enough time between them. There's first time. month. Right. Okay. They meet, but they bring it Okay. okay. Nelson, Ms. Chair, our, our, our pictures. Yeah. Group picture. Everybody's in place now. We can yes, arrange right to out. have a group picture taken. Okay. Group pictures and our individual pictures. Did we get our individual? Did. did we get those from Miss, the lady that took them in Mr. Spring? I know she took them, but I, I never. Miss Nick? Yeah, but did she well, have she's the ones saying that we, nev we never did see them. We never did see any of them. Individual pictures. <laughs> Every, everybody else has been seeing them. <laughs> they are they online? <laughs> they on the county website? No, they are That's where okay. I can go to see them. I want a hard <laughs> copy. <laughs> I want a hard copy. In our county facilities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once we get our, our nice group, group shot. Picture, yeah. Picture, mm -hmm. Put our group picture. Uh, I, I thought we was going to do individual pictures. So we're going to just put, put a group picture. A group, a group picture. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And change it as necessary. All right. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Chair, turn the motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor. Mm -hmm. I'll see y'all. See you downtown.